In this lesson, we're going to go back and look at circular motion and specifically how forces are put into circular motion problems, and that's dynamics uh, represents uh, forces versus kinematics, which we uh, used for circular motion before, uh, just looking at uh, the equations, and that's really what I have here, a reminder of those equations uh, that we use for, the, uh, for circular motion, regardless of whether we're looking at forces or not. So in this case, uh, the diagram uh, here is showing you a um, mass attached to what I'm going to say is the end of a string, and it's being twirled uh, in a circle, uh, whether it's a perfectly vertical circle or uh, the orientation of the circle doesn't really matter right now for what we're looking at, but we have circular motion. So you have a radially inward acceleration, v squared on r, whenever you have circular motion. All circular motion is accelerated motion because it is not possible, as it says here, to have circular motion without speed v, that's motion, and you can't have a circle without a radius r, so it is impossible to have circular motion without v squared on r. In fact, I want you to think of circular motion as v squared on r motion. So when we have this acceleration now in the problem, which we've talked about before, uh, we can associate it with a force by using F equals MA. So there has to be a net, I'm going to add the word net here, force radial net. There has to be a net force radially inward to have circular motion, and we can set that equal to mass times acceleration. And we are going to look at example problems where we do that. Uh, in terms of looking at specific examples to do that, uh, please get used to drawing in uh, actual forces, uh, not labeling the, the inward force uh, F radial. So here I have a, kind of an X uh, through that. Uh, you do not want to just generically label a force. It has to be an actual force. Uh, tension, friction, the force normal, gravity, or some other applied force. Uh, force normal as, as well. So, Newton's second law doesn't go away. Um, we all have F equals MA. Uh, I have this pre-annotated, pre some of this written in for you. We're going to use actual forces, right? Uh, not the uh, generic uh, you know, force centripetal or force radial. Uh, these equations we've seen before, uh, A radial equals V squared on R. Uh, this equation is only if V equals a constant, right? So we've also done those problems. So if the velocity is constant, if it's moving in a circle at a constant rate and the speed remains constant, then we get distance over time, 2 pi r over the period, and of course we recall the frequency of motion and the period of motion are reciprocals of each other. So we're going to look at some specific examples and talk about how to do force diagrams and solve uh, numerical problems uh, based on circular motion and summing the forces in the radial direction. Before we do that, I have one more reminder to never draw in a, gen a generic uh, force radial. And we, we have this as a separate page in our notes because over the years, uh, the teachers, we have seen so many force diagrams with some just generic F that does not belong there. It has to be an actual force in the problem. And you will lose points on the AP test if you just put generic forces into problems. So let's take a look at a specific example. So here we have horizontal circular motion, and we are told to consider a mass of 0.25 kilograms attached to a string of 0.2 meters in length rotating on a frictionless surface and it is making 10 revolutions per second. So if you are not told that that number is changing, uh, you are to assume it is a constant 10 revolutions per second, so that means it is moving at constant speed. I could use speed equals distance over time and 2 pi r over the period, if I choose to or needed to. So here we are asked to calculate the tension T1 in the string. So notice that I do not put a generic force. It's the force from the tension T1. I don't label it force radial. I don't 
call it four centripetal. So you're looking at a horizontal frictionless table. So the velocity at any point in time would be tangent, the velocity vector. We have the gravitational force mg straight down, and in this case, the normal force would equal the gravitational force, because we have no other forces in the y direction, to increase or decrease what the table has to do to support the mass. So then we do some of the forces in the y direction, and some of the forces in the x direction we are going to replace with the radial direction. So our sum of the forces in the y direction is how we would normally do it. So in this case, the normal force equals mg because we have sum of the forces uh, equals mass times acceleration. There is no acceleration since it's not moving in the vertical direction, so force normal equals mg. Uh, notice that instead of doing the x direction, I want you to do some of the forces for circular motion. I want you to do a sum of the forces in the radial direction equals mass times acceleration in the radial direction, and for radial acceleration, you plug in V squared on R, and this is really important. Radially inward, you will use as positive, so please uh, make a note that radially inward will always be the positive direction for this equation, okay? So, what are we told? Um, we're given the mass, so we know M, uh, we know R, right? So we know the mass, we know R. If we know a V, then we can calculate the tension. So we know that it makes 10 revolutions per second. One revolution is a 2 pi R distance. Uh, so the seconds per revolution would be the inverse of that. So one revolution uh, is going to uh, be equal to, well, here I have 10 revolutions. So 10 revolutions is uh, 10 uh, 2 pi r's. So uh, that total uh, distance uh, that it travels is the 12.566 meters. So in 10 revolutions, I calculated it made the 12.566 uh, revolutions per second. So I get the speed v. I can plug in v squared and go from there. Uh, we know that uh, frequency, just to show you that I could have done it in terms of frequency, frequency is 1 over the period, right? Um, so we were given the, the, the frequency is 10, so the period is 1 on the frequency, so it's 1 tenth, right? So we could have done uh, speed equals just 2 pi r over the period, uh, as well if we had wanted to do that, or we, we could have said that um, the speed is, is 2 pi r f, right? So you have that equation to use as well, 2 pi r, 2 pi r f, and f is 1 over t, okay? So we have 2 pi r v is 2 pi r over the period, or v is 2 pi r f. All right. The last note uh, I have for this page of notes is that if friction were in the problem, so if instead of being on a frictionless table, uh, you had it on a table with friction, we would have to go back and uh, calculate what friction is doing to the speed. So we would need to calculate a tan by calculate, using the frictional force to calculate a tan and then using a tan in the constant acceleration equations to find out how the speed is changing, and then use V squared on R. So keep that uh, in mind if there is uh, friction in the problem changing the speed of the object as well. So that's our introduction to uh, forces and circular motion, and we're going to do some homework problems and hopefully get a better feel for how forces and circular motion are used.